here I have nuke open. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to read my displacement file. So I'm gonna press R to read my displacement. And here I already have my exported 32-bit displacement map out of ZBrush. And we have four UDIMs. So I'm going to open these. And I'm gonna press one to see through the viewer. But as you can see, we don't see anything yet because uh, this is a 32-bit file. So the values are extreme. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the values in this viewer here. So this is not affecting the image. This is just affecting uh, how we view the file. The first thing I wanna do here is to isolate the red color. I'm gonna create a shuffle node. So I isolated my color and now I'm just gonna reset this viewer because we don't want that for now. And after my shuffle node, I'm going to create a grade node. You can press tab and search for a grade or just press G. And then here in my grade node, I'm just going to start tweaking these values to get something that is similar to a cavity map. And the values here, they can vary a lot depending on your needs. So, and that's a great thing about this method is that instead of just waiting for the software to give you the results, you can just tweak until you find something that you like. Uh, I, I actually like this a lot. I think it keeps some of the details from the wrinkles. That looks fine to me. One thing I'm gonna do, because if you if we see the values down there, we can see that uh, we are going beyond uh, one. And I don't want that. I want to clamp my white values. So I'm just gonna click here. And now they're all set to one. Again, this is a very, very simple setup. If you know Nuke a bit better, you can you can start playing with a lot of stuff. You can add a blur node. You can use erode. You can you can play around with it if you like. I'm I'm going to keep this very simple, uh, just so you understand the concept. But we can explore that later. Okay. And now that I have the result that I want, I'm just going to explore this by creating a write node. I'm just going to select my output folder. I have a folder here called New Cavity already. I'm going to create it. I call it new cavity. I want this to be a new dim and I want it to be a TIFF file. And now I'm going to set it to 16 bit. I'm going to set it to linear. And then I'm just going to press render. And then I'm going to export my four files. And now I'm just going to go into Mari and take a look at this file and compare it to the file that I had out of ZBrush. Okay, so in Mari, I imported the two, two different cavity maps. One is the cavity map that I exported out of ZBrush using their baking system. And the second one here is the cavity map that we just created out of Nuke. So let's take a look at both of them and see how they compare. The first one, the cavity out of ZBrush, you can see that it looks fine and I use this before a lot and it works, uh, but the edges are a bit jagged and it looks a bit low res in some areas, which can be fixed by just blurring a little bit. But if we look at the, the ZBrush version, you can see that there's way more resolution and again, I didn't even put a lot of effort in this map. I just used the gray node. But imagine if you if you use a road or if you use a blur node, you can get uh, more complex results if you like. Yeah, this is just another technique that you can use. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, this quick tutorial. I hope you find a good use to this technique. Okay, thank you. And I see you next week.